Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I bless God for this opportunity to bring his truth to you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I, I ask this of you, Lord. Open our eyes to your truth. Holy Spirit, Jesus said you will guide us into all truth. And that's what we expect today as we submit completely to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. So, so we are talking about Job. Now, yesterday I told you God have two blessings that he blesses his children with. Now, when I say his children, those who... Now, there's a general blessing God gives because he's responsible for you, see? But then when he begins to separate you out for a blessing, even that one, there are two blessings he gives. And the first one is the blessing associated to mammon. In other words, you are, you are so blessed. He blesses the work of your hands. So you, you walk, you, your, 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 your duty or your labor is expected from that blessing, for that blessing to come. So, so you're expected to do something and then you get the blessing in reward. See? So, so you, you, you walk and then when it's time for them to pay your salary, they give you a multiple bonus and like, whoa. And I said, oh, no, we just thought to give you this. Praise God. So, so that's, 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 and then you, you find favor with men and stuff like that. Now that's the God's blessing. But you can attribute every one of those blessings to a job you did. Now that's where Job was in his life. He was so blessed. But it was that first blessing that he had. Now there is the second blessing that God gives. Now I said this. Everyone who is perfect with God qualifies. Not everybody now. Everyone who, now when I say perfect with God, I'm not just saying, you know, we need to understand this thing. I'm, I'm not even saying that Christ has made us perfect. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you have shown before the Lord that your ways are right and perfect. He judges you by that. Oh, yes. So, so he gives you this blessing. And then also on the other hand, the second kind of blessing is the blessing that, listen, you cannot associate this you cannot associate this blessing with anything that is called labor on your part i'm telling you the truth so 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 job had this first blessing but because he had worked perfectly before the lord i'm telling you what the holy spirit taught me because he had worked perfectly before the lord he was qualified for the second blessing. Now that's what Jesus meant when he said, you have to be faithful with the unrighteous mammon before true riches is going to be committed into your trust. So Jesus himself acknowledged that there is the blessing of the unrighteous mammon. And then there is the blessing of true riches. Now, now what do I mean true riches? True riches, you see, Thank you, Holy Spirit. When you were born, you were born rich. This is the truth. You were born rich. Everything you need in life was already provided for you by God. Now, it is your working perfectly in obedience to the Lord that will make you assess every one of those things. Now, you're there crying. Uh, 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 can you imagine? I don't even have a house. I don't have the, I can't even pay my house rent. And I, you don't realize this, that God have, have given you estates. So, so from Job's lesson, we're going to learn this. Now, I said, God, Job was qualified for this blessing. When I mean this blessing, the true riches. And God wanted to give it into his hands. But there is something, the, 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 the border between the blessing of the work of your hands and true riches, the demarcating point has to do with death. Well, what, what do you mean debt? Yes, dying. <laughs> Praise God. So the old have to die. Or you have to die to the old for the new to come. So you have to die to mammon for true riches to come. 
And this death is not by accident. It is deliberate. So, what happened to Job? Now, this is what the Spirit of God showed me. Job was blessed and enjoying his blessing. But God looked at him and said, this guy qualifies for true riches. And I want to give him true riches. And, and the word of the Lord came to Job. And God said to Job, Job, you know what? Say, yes, sir. I want you to give out everything you have. And you know the funny thing? That's where God will always stop. He's not going to tell you what happens after that. <laughs> He's like, Arr! yes. He's not going to. So, so it was now a difficult, for the first time, Job found it difficult to obey God. Because he began to count the cost. I mean, come on now. Lord, why, why would you lift me this up? Why would you lift me up? Why would you bless me like this and tell me all of a sudden to give out everything I have? Yes. Now, that was the point fear came into Job's heart. Why did fear come? Because he was now struggling to obey God. And because he was struggling to obey God, he knew that he was walking in a different realm now. And so fear came into his heart. Now, it doesn't mean God took away the hedge from, the, the from him. No, he didn't. God was still protected because God wanted him to obey how can you prove this? Oh, yes. Jesus proved this story in the New Testament. You know, when Jesus was on the earth, I mean. You remember that rich young ruler that came to meet Jesus? And he said, Master, there's something I'm missing. This guy was rich. And he was godly. So he said, what must I do? I want to inherit life. Now, what life do you think he was? Talking? Even in his heart, he knew, I'm rich, but there is something more. There is something more. The life of Jesus alone is a challenge. If you, if you lived around Jesus, his life will challenge you. I mean, I'm laboring, getting all the jobs and doing all the work and, and, and stuff. I'm so rich. But this guy, what does he do? Nothing. He just wakes up and travels to one city to another city. And then the next thing he wants, anytime he wants money, even fish will give him money. Hey, well, come on, what? what what, what, what kind of... If you live and see that kind of a thing, your riches will be made nothing. Because you will see how long you labor to buy one car. And you're happy. You can tell, oh, this is my sweat. And someone wakes up and says, Father, I need a car. Now you've saved... You, you, or, or you bought a car by mortgage. So, so you're trying to pay off the mortgage. And it's going to take you like four years to pay off that mortgage. And while you're there, this guy who, who's not even, do, have, he's not working. I mean, you can't see any work he does. Maybe all he does is just, you know, preach the gospel yeah, and stuff. And then you, you, you're standing with the guy. He said, oh, Father, I, I, I desire this car. And then the next thing, there's a, a call comes in. I said, oh, how is everything? The Lord just spoke to me that I should bring that car, this car to you. And then the guy's like, Really? Come on now. What, what, how? 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 Praise <laughs> God. Yeah. Now, this rich young ruler Jesus met had it all. But he knew something was missing. So he went to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, you know the Lord, keep it. And he said, sir, all these things I have kept from my youth. That's to tell you that he never cheated anybody to be rich. He never lied. He never did fraud. He was really blessed by God. And Jesus looked at him. The Bible said Jesus beholding him loved him. The scripture references on the screen. Read it. Jesus beholding him loved him. And now, this, this, these are the words that came out of the mouth of Jesus to somebody he just fell in love with. And what did Jesus say? One thing you lack. Okay. What is it? I will not tell you. But I'll tell you how to get it. Okay, how do I get it? Go sell everything you have. Not some. Go sell everything you have. Give to the poor and come follow me. Hmm. And the Bible says, just like Job, the man weighed everything he had. He weighed the words of Jesus. And he said, nah, nah, I don't think this is what I should do. Nah, 
not now. I mean, do you know, do you know how old I, when, you know, when I started business? Do you know how, how many years it took me to build what I have right now? I should just give everything away and then come follow you? Ah, nah, nah, nah. He walked, the Bible said he walked away sad. Now, when he walked away, what did Jesus say? Jesus looked at him and said, Hey, how hard it is for people who trust in mammon. Truly. You see, now he's not just talking about stealers, people who steal or, or wicked men. He's even godly men. How hard it is for them to let go of mammon and enter the kingdom of heaven. He wasn't talking about dying and, and you know, uh, standing before God and that's not what he was talking about. He was talking about entering into perfection, entering into God's real blessing. The second blessing I'm talking about. <clears throat> and the disciples said to Jesus, he says, we have left all to follow you. And Jesus said immediately, there is no one who has left father, mother, you know, and all this to follow me that will not receive in this life a hundredfold blessing. Now, what is a hundredfold blessing? Many people have confused this. They think a hundredfold blessing is if I give one car, I'm going to get a hundred. No, that's not what a hundredfold is. A hundredfold means perfection. See, a hundredfold means perfection. The perfection of blessing. So, what does that mean? It means if God gives you a hundredfold blessing where car is concerned, you know what that means? It means you will never lack any car. You will never lack car anywhere. Listen, travel from here to the moon and you need a vehicle to move, you will just see one car driving down <laughs> and, and someone stopping to say, hey, where are you going? Oh, this way I'm going. You know what? You can have this car. Just, just have it while you're around. That's what a hundredfold. You will never lack a car in your life. That's what a hundredfold means. It doesn't mean because you gave one car, you're going to have hundred packed in your garage. Say, brethren, I gave one car five years ago. Look at counts. How many cars are here? That is the hundredfold blessing. No. No. <laughs> That's not what it means. It simply means, you see, where, where car is concerned, every car in this world has been supplied to you. When you need them, they show up. You see, that's why Jesus could, you know, sometimes people say, oh, Jesus, why, uh, why are we living such a way that even Jesus did not live, you know, the way, you know, believers think they want to live now. Hey, you know why Jesus didn't live that way? He was walking in the hundredfold. And the truth is, when you're walking in the hundredfold, before you get into the hundredfold blessing, God kills covetousness in your hearts. What is covetousness? The thinking or reasoning that what I have is what have made me. So I have 10 cars packed in my garage and I wow, now I am rich. It's covetousness. See, the man who's walking in a hundredfold blessing, you may not even see one car in his garage. But you know one thing about him? He wants to go out now. A car will show up and carry him to wherever he's going to. <laughs> he, he will never see because the truth is every car in the world is under his command so where does he want to park them so that's the thing with Jesus where was Jesus going to park all the cars and all the houses and all the private jets every one of it belongs to him they say every, the one in your hand belongs to him so the man who enjoys a hundredfold blessing I'm going to show you this from the, in the book of Job now the man who enjoys a hundredfold blessing, it means truly when God says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, he has delivered, that's what it means. So when God blesses you with that blessing, he delivers his authority into your hands. So truly, even you, the earth comes to you for anything, more like saying the earth is not at your disposal. What do you want? So you see Job had this issue now. And God wanted to move him to this other side. But Job had a problem. He couldn't trust God. Just like the rich young ruler in scripture. So what did God have to do? You see, because Job qualified for that blessing. God had to introduce Satan into his life. Now I'm going to explain that to you tomorrow. <laughs> Praise God. 
Oh, some of you are already getting it. You're, you're just, you're, you're, you're putting the business together. Now. Oh, yes. I see it now. Yeah. You're seeing it. Praise God. But I'm still going to, I'm still going to explain that to you tomorrow. God bless you. This is Atuba Judge. See you tomorrow.